painted. The same meticulous care and planning which material received in the rebuild and renewing stages extends all the way down the line. Great emphasis is put by ordinance on top grade preservation, packaging and packing. The condition of supplies when received is in direct ratio to the quality of its packing. Every item is carefully cleaned and the critical surfaces prepared for protection. Ordnance uses many types of vapor barrier materials and preservatives, as well as cartons and boxes in the packaging process. This guarantees that spare parts as well as equipment are in the best possible condition when received by troops. After receiving the right kind of preservative, items are cottonized in an assembly line operation. Wrapped packages are waterproofed with a thick coat of molten wax. Each package is carefully labeled for easy identification. Packaging and identification go hand in hand. While some items must first be wrapped and the package waterproofed, others need only to be dipped in a preservative compound such as plastic. Such compounds resist deterioration and damage. Army packaging procedures must be more rigid than those followed commercially. An individual box may end up on some soldier's back for transportation to the front. His life and lives of his buddies may depend on what's in it. Any shipment may be directed to any area in the world where American forces serve. Just as ordnance is equally concerned with the soldier's rifle and a division's artillery, so every element of the world's climates and terrains is its concern. From a freight car in the Middle West, days later, a shipment of badly needed spare parts may be found rolling toward a tank battalion located on the edge of the Iron Curtain in the Austrian Alps. The scope of Ordnance's task is enormous. As well as designing, producing, and supplying the major portion of the Army's hardware, finding new products like all-weather lubricants, which keep tanks running smoothly, is its responsibility. Every factor of weather and geography where American troops are stationed, or may be called upon to fight, must be considered. Ordnance products must be rugged, long-lasting, and above all, practical wherever needed. Korea's long, hard winters and mountainous terrain tested the battle worthiness of U.S. equipment to a degree impossible even in the best laboratories. Ordnance's quest for the best weapons and fighting machines attainable is an unceasing one. Constant experimentation is an integral part of the Corps' program of improvement. In the remotest, most inaccessible parts of the world, if there are U.S. troops in need of firepower or hard-to-find replacement parts, ordnance can be counted on to come up swiftly and economically with the right amount of the right stuff at the right time. Under the terms of the Korean Truce Agreement, the Communist and United Nations commands are permitted to rotate 35,000 troops monthly on each side. Of communist intentions today, no one can be sure. But for the men arriving in Korea who will guard the truce line, two things are a certainty. Their weapons, equipment, and supplies by any standard are the world's best. And as the mightiest industrial power in history, the United States is capable of producing arms sufficient to smother any future aggression which may threaten the security of the free world. In the final analysis, to the American soldier, nothing is more vital, nothing more precious than the weapons giving him his strength in combat. Traditional American inventiveness and imagination in production and supply are staunch guarantees of this strength. In large measure, the United States Army Ordnance Corps contributes to the rightful confidence of the American soldier. Every man in a combat division is backed up by men and women working to make his job safer, constantly striving to increase his fighting power.
In battle, there is no place for equipment short of the finest. The Ordnance Corps' diligence and unrelenting improvement of weapons is one of the greatest safeguards to the well-being of the individual American soldier and to his country. The illustrations we've just seen show only a few of the ways today's United States Army gets more defense for less money. The effectiveness of our ordnance program depends on good management, cutting costs and at the same time improving quality are two key contributions to good management and thereby to the national security. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen inviting you to be with us again next week when we will present another look at the big picture. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the U.S. Army in cooperation with this station. You can be an important part of the Big Picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.